if I were to stand up here and tell you every single thing that Chip Kidd has accomplished throughout his, his long career, we'd probably still be here this weekend, and there's a good chance that we probably would be here through the inauguration next Tuesday, so I will be very brief. Um, Chip Kidd has been designing book jackets for Knopf since way back in the mid-80s, and I might be mistaken, but I believe he was seven years of age when he took this job. Is that right? Six, six years old, pretty amazing. Uh, he has designed over 1,500 books with an average output of around 75 a year. He's designed for nearly every kind of book and has built long-lasting relationships with the likes of David Sedaris, John Updike, Cormac McCarthy, and the late Michael Crichton, to name just a few. But there is no one jacket that defines his taste and style. There wasn't a specific moment when he went from being Chip Kidd, associate art director, to Chip Kidd, design icon. <laughs> it was a deliberate, paced accumulation of work that cemented a reputation. It would have been easy for Chip to do nothing but design book jackets for the rest of his life. His place in the literary world had already been carved out, and he was good at it. But that was just the beginning. <clears throat> when a person who's great in one field attempts to succeed in another, the results can mixed at best. I'm thinking of things like Michael Jordan's baseball career, uh, Mariah Carey's acting career, <laughs> and the entire catalog of Bruce Willis's recordings. <laughs> but with his two novels, The Cheese Monkeys and The Learners, Chip has shown that he is just as talented putting words on a page as he is arranging images on a book jacket. And if that weren't enough, Chip has formed a band called Artbreak that's been described as the new pornographers meets the cars, which come from two different eras, I guess, but that's okay. So the man who has been hailed by USA Today as the closest thing to a rock star in the graphic design world has actually now become a rock star. And it's just not fair, really. Over the past hundred years or so, almost every form of media has gone through some kind of evolution. The phonograph has now become the iPod. Edison's movie projector is now a Blu-ray player. But books, for the most part, have remained the same. Now more than ever, with e-books and Amazon's Kindle and everything else, the traditional bound book is threatened like never before. I assume that most of us in this room are fond of books just the way they are. So if someone ever says to you, give me one reason why books should survive, just tell them about our guest tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Chip Kidd. The end. Questions? <laughs> God, how the hell am I going to live up to all of that? <laughs> about 12 years ago, I found out that <laughs> in Japan, they licensed the rights to write and, dis and dis <clears throat> to write and draw their own Batman and Robin stories uh, in Japan, in Tokyo. Uh, this was fully licensed through DC Comics at the time, and it was uh, generated by the Batman TV show with Adam West. And it was amazing. This was a revelation to me. I had not known anything about this. And I think part of the reason I didn't know anything about this is that practically nobody in Japan knows anything about this. These stories came out in 1966 uh, through 1967, and then boom, that was it. They were published in a, a children's weekly anthology called uh, Shonen Gaho and, uh, and Shonen King. It's not just the comics, it's the stuff. Uh, Saul and I together have like the single best vintage Japanese Batman uh, stuff collection in the world. This is something that I could only describe as a baby mask. <laughs> it's about this big, and um, it's totally enigmatic. Why you would clamp this onto the face of your child? <laughs> I cannot know. There are no breathing holes of any kind. <laughs> Editor 
loved it. Editor-in-chief loved it. Marketing loved it. Author opposite of loved it. <laughs> you've taken my great, meaningful book and you've trivialized it and you've put a smiley and a frowny face on it. <laughs> really hate this. Now, we try to maintain at Knopf that the author is always right, whether it's in his contract or not. So now we have to start with it. And I'm thinking, all right, I still want to um, try and do something conceptual. So basically, this is just taking your eye on a journey. You know, you're going to start at the top and think about life, and one day you'll be done, boop, and you're dead. Uh, and then this is who it's by. Fun. Uh, Works for me. Uh, editor liked it, editor in chief liked it, marketing liked it. Author opposite of liked it. You're still being way too cute. This is too gimmicky. Uh, you're taking my great title and you are um, you're peeing on it. So why don't you try a different shade of blue and why don't you do a flush left rag right and why don't you make my name in yellow and why don't you make the dot pink and other than that you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so that's it. That's how it went out. It's like, I give up, but that's fine. You're the author. Uh, it, it's your funeral, whatever. Um, no. So that's how the book went out. And, um, and it was soon reviewed in the New York Times book review, and they really didn't like it very much at all, and I was very happy about that. I did not use any of Schultz's drawings on the jacket or his signature. This is a problem. So, Michaelis is a mensch, and he said, you know what, just, just bolt. If you, you, you don't need to deal with this anymore. And he went through hell with all this stuff. But, but basically, uh, he said to me, you know, just, just give up and we'll deal with it. And I said, no, I love this book, and I love Schultz, and I think it's great, and I think, you know, I, I want to I wanna somehow figure it out. Well, the way to figure it out was to reduce even more. And uh, the way to do that is to play into, into Schultz's genius, genius even to a next level, which is this. You cannot copyright a black zigzag <laughs> on a yellow-orange background. And however much that may look like Schultz's handwriting, it's not. It's comic strip typeface by Agfa. <laughs> So there it was, and that's how it went out into the world, and the, the, uh, the paperback came out this past fall. But anyway, if you go to my website, or if you go to, well, we have a MySpace page, um, we have a whole album's worth of material that we are still working on and tweaking. We're doing it all ourselves, and um, we hope to have that for sale by the end of the spring. We did a, uh, a video. <laughs> We did a video with uh, a guy named Gary Nudeau. Um, the song is called Asymmetrical Girl, and it's about a girl who's asymmetrical. <laughs> um, the screen is split in the middle, and then it sort of like weaves back and forth from that. And, and it's very, it's a very proto new wave song. So it's like, uh, you know, good old white background and black and white mostly colors. Um, because it's asymmetrical girl, I wanted an actual girl in it. So my um, my niece, who is 17 years old and plays the drums, agreed to be in it, and she's adorable and cute as a button. And so um, that's the world.